we have not played a complete game. We have not played a game where the offense, defense, as well as special teams has all shown, shown up in the same manner. Um, if, if the offense is playing well, the defense is, is hot garbage. If the defense is playing well, the offense is ho- horrible. Um, and special teams aren't, aren't special. So we got to put it all together to be able to defeat a team like Oregon in that manner. It's a fascinating game. Heather and Paul are here getting up with us early as usual. And so, guys, I want to zoom out before we zoom in. Paul, you've been around the sport as long as anybody. H- how would you describe the impact that Dion is having on college football? Greeny, I've covered college football for more than 40 years, and this is the biggest phenomenon I have ever seen. And there's nothing even close. I mean, we've had flashes of great players along the way, but, th- but this has completely captured the sport for the first three weeks. It is capturing it this weekend. And Greeny, regardless of what happens in Oregon on Saturday afternoon, it will be right back in Boulder next week when Caleb Williams and Lincoln Riley and USC show up. So that is five consecutive weeks. Uh, Owning the sport, sucking all the oxygen out. I mean, Nick Saban is struggling to be uh, and playing second fiddle. That's how big this is. Heather. Well, I think what college football needs right now is Deion Sanders and this entire team. Because with all of the off-field things going on, with name, image, and likeness, conference realignment, this is the spark and the character that college football fans need. But it goes deeper than that. Deion had an impact in the conversations of Colorado eventually joining the Big 12. And he's had an impact on what coaches can do in their first year using the transfer portal to transform teams. And so his impact is bigger than just the attention swell right now around that program. And so, Heather, let me then turn to on the field. Let's zoom back in again. Colorado was a three-touchdown underdog to start this season against TCU and won that game. Now they're a big underdog against, against Oregon, and then we assume they will be against USC next week. What is the, how would you assess the chances that they win one or both of these games? Well, I'm sure Deion Sanders is going to keep this and add it to his list of receipts, but I think they get a dose of reality over the next two games. I don't think they win either one of them. I had a coach who played against Oregon tell me that Shadur Sanders is going to, quote, have to play his best damn game in order for them to have a chance. Oregon is a very good team on both sides of the ball. Bo Nix gets all the attention at quarterback, and deservedly so. They can run the ball well. They can play defense. They're a deeper, more established team at this point under Dan Lanning. What do you think, Paul? I don't think there's really any chance at all. And I, with Travis Hunter, who's not in the game, of course, uh, they may have had a puncher's chance. And I mean like a wild swing that, that luckily catches somebody's jaw. But, but I, I think uh, Heather's completely right. I mean, this thing is – this run of winning games is over for a few weeks. But uh, it, we're still going to be watching. All right, very quickly, because there's two more things I want to get to with you here. Paul, you mentioned Nick Saban really struggling, even in a win last week, quarterback problems. How much trouble is Alabama in, and are we looking at the end of something special in Alabama under Nick Saban? Alabama is in dire straits right now, Greeny. Uh, I mean, they really have very little going for it. Uh, Saban uh, brought in Tommy Reese from Notre Dame, and uh, in, in, in three games, uh, the, the offensive coordinator has screwed up the quarterback situation about as badly as, well, maybe the Jets. Uh, I mean, it's, <laughs> it's just impossible to talk about how, how poor things are right now. The offensive line uh, it has been a, a complete and total disaster. Uh, he's uh, he'll, he's starting Jalen Milrow against Ole, Ole Miss. That's a that's the third quarterback. I mean, he he started Milrow, then he put in Buckner, then he put in Ty Simpson. Now he's back to Milrow. It makes very little sense. I think Nick Saban is, is his career is teetering right now in the sense of you know where is it going to go? And if Lane Kiffin walks in there Saturday and beats him. Keep-